No, Joy, just the small ones. I'm taking the big ones. Aren't you tired, Mom? I sure am. Oh, no. I'm having too much fun. Hello there. Hello, Mr. Grafton. Oh. Well, Sam, what brings you out this far? Couldn't be that we owe you that much money. <laughs> well, if you don't, it's because my prices are so reasonable. How about a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Put your plow share in the back here. Oh, boy, isn't she a beauty. <laughs> Where's the handle? Oh, they'll be coming in a different shipment. Oh, fine. That's just fine. What good is a plow share without the handle? Got a letter for you, Mrs. Starrett. Came all the way from Boston, Massachusetts. What's Boston, Massachusetts? Well, that's where your ma's from, back east, Joey. Warren Elliott. Warren. Well, we all finished for the day. Thank you, Mr. Grafton. Sure thing. Got something for you, too, Joey. Thank you, Mr. Grafton. Come on. When will the handles be in, Sam? Well, a couple days, I suppose. Got to come in all the way from Miles City. Well, be seeing you. Somebody sneaking up behind me? I don't know. Well, what's that mean? Well, that fellow wrote that letter, Warren Elliott. He used to be one of Marion's old boyfriends. Down, two to go. Hi, Miss Starrett. What can I do for you? I came to see if the plow handles had arrived. I told Shane it'd be another couple of days, didn't he tell you? No, no, he didn't. Well, anything else I can do for you? Mr. Grafton, do you have a mirror? A mirror, sure thing. Mirrors, 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 mirrors. Uh, who are you prettying up for, Miss Starrett? Grafton here, or? Or us. Or Shane. <laughs> there you are. 
Got all kinds of mirrors. You gotta say one thing for them sodbuster women. They sure work hard. <laughs> well, so does a mule. <laughs> this one will be fine. How much? Uh, this is six bits. Shall I polish it up and make sure the glass is true? Oh, no, Mr. Grafton, don't bother. It's not for me. It's for the men to shave with. They crack theirs. Watch out you don't crack that one. You better wash your face before you look. <laughs> Get up! Get up! Get the rest of the wood hauled in after supper. We've still got an hour of daylight to work in. Yeah, if we eat up real fast. Something burning. Joey, don't reach like that. Grandpa said to eat fast. Sure could do with a cup of coffee. Meat looks funny. There's nothing wrong with the meat. Only worry we've got left for tomorrow is one of the team looks like she might be pulling up lame. Would somebody give me something to eat, please? Well, sure, honey. You burned your keep today. Don't reach like that. Joey, how many times do I have to tell you to ask to have things passed? Pass the potatoes, please. Maybe she'd like some coffee. Who's she? The cat's mother? What's the matter with you this evening? Something wrong? Oh, no. Everything's fine. I just love stacking wood and going into Grafton so all the cowboys can have a good laugh. It doesn't bother me to hear men say I don't even look like a woman again. It's fun. It's almost as much fun as working like a mule here with nobody noticing. Cooking myself on that wood stove to cook your dinner. And never having anyone say good evening, or please, or thank you. Or ever even talk to me about anything except wood for the winter and plow handles. Well, she's had that coming ever since she got that letter. Nothing to it. Three of us. My nice shaving mirror you bought. Big improvement. I was thinking we could stand a few more improvements. I mean, if we could afford to brighten the place up a little. Maybe get some material for curtains. Maybe even get some dress material for me. It's just awful the way I've been dragging around the place. Well, oh, honey, you're a fine figure of a woman. No, I've changed since I left Boston. The letter I got reminded me. That's so. You know what he wrote? You're gonna think this is silly. I can't help but wonder how you've managed to make a life for yourself in such a desolate part of the country. I remember that we used to call Mary and Claire the most beautiful girl in Boston. What do they call you now? The most beautiful woman in the valley? People out here don't talk like that. So. Even if they did, well, there's no use to be silly and schoolgirl vain. A woman with a boy Joey's age, living like this. The point is, Warren's coming to visit. Here? Not staying here. Staying at Grafton's, probably. Warren's a state senator now. Well... What do you suppose the Massachusetts senator is going to think of us? He'll have to take us as he finds us. Of course, he might find it rather pokey and rough. It's so hard here just to keep going. If 
folks back home mightn't understand. He'll understand. If he's the right kind of fella. Oh, he is. At least he used to be. A real gentleman. I don't think I've ever met anyone quite like Warren. Shane. What Marion don't know is I heard that name Warren Elliott before, from my son Joe. They were both courting her back in those days. What do you make of that? Not much. Well, look at the ruckus it's kicked up already. If it's that bad now, what do you think it's gonna be when he gets here? He's gonna try taking her back east, Joey and all. Could be. Well, you stand there sharpening that axe. I don't think you heard a word of what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you that we stand a chance of losing our family. I don't know that I can claim any family to lose. She's always loved every stick in this valley. It's always been enough for her. Always been, may not always be. She's young enough and pretty enough to start over. She can find somebody. She never had the chance before. No one in this valley but married homesteaders and cowboys she wouldn't have. I wouldn't say that's all there is in this valley. Unless you want to count the ones passing through. Lawmen, gunfighters. They can't light any place for good. That's how you see it. That's how it is. Yeah, that's fine, Sam. And let me have a can of that tinned beef. Be cheaper if you bought three. Yeah, if we could eat three. Be back in a jiffy. No hurry, Sam. You're Warren Elliott. Well, yes. Mrs. Starrett's waiting for you to arrive. I'm sure she'd like to have you up to supper tonight. Well, fine. You tell her I'll be delighted to accept. And how is Marion? Never better. I'll meet you here about six. Excuse me. Who are you? I'm Shane, Mrs. Starrett's hired man. Sorry. That's all right. I ought to be used to not having much privacy. I thought you'd want to know. Your friend is here. My friend? Mr. Elliot. I figured you'd want him up for supper, so I invited him. When? Tonight. <gasps> you said he was your friend. Well, he is, but I didn't expect him to be arriving so soon. Shane, what did you two talk about? Nothing. I invited him out, explained I was the hired man. Oh, you didn't have to do that, Shane. Your family, you know that. You do know that, Shane. Shane?
one of these in a long time. I hope it stays straight. They're here. Grandpa, they're here. Ma, they're here. Is this fool thing straight? You look like Sunday. Well, we're going to act like Sunday, too. Don't forget it. Right this way, Mr. Elliott. Thank you. Mr. Senator, welcome to our home. A great honor, Mr. Starrett. Warren, how long has it been? A long time, Marion. Much too long. Music hath charms to soothe the savage beast. But he would have said ham hocks had he just eaten a meal like this. That's very nice of you to say, Senator. It not being the kind of food you used to having back east. I'm inclined to think that that's our loss, Mr. Starrett. <clears throat> Mr. Senator, what is it exactly that brings you out here? Would you like me to pass you the cream, Mr. Elliot? No, thank you, Joey. I take it black. Would you like me to pass you the sugar? Oh, I can reach it. You weren't supposed to reach. Joey. Like I said, Mr. Senator, what brought you out here? Wells Fargo, Mr. Starrett. Joey, I think it's time you went to bed. Oh, Mom. <laughs> Joey, please. Well, Tom, we, uh, we've got chores to do. Can I help? No, no, you finish your coffee. You're company. Excuse us. Is it politicians your father-in-law doesn't like? Or is it me? Oh, it takes Tom a little while to warm up to people. He's not a young man. Lucky day for him when Shane came to rest here. He hasn't quite come to rest. I mean, there's a certain kind of Westerner who doesn't stay any one place very long. Not like the home-loving citizens of New England. No, not at all like that. Lived my whole life in the same state. Pursued the same ambitions. Felt the same way about the same woman. Some chores we gotta do. He's not such a bad fellow. No, he's not as bad as I thought he might be. I'll bet he can't ride a horse. He can't tell poetry. Shane can, can't you, Shane? You're supposed to be asleep. You taught me a poem, remember? From this valley they say you are leaving. I will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile. But remember the Red River Valley and the cowboy you loved for a while. Well, now that's some poem. It's not exactly Shakespeare. There must be some place in town I can ride a horse. Well, there's the livery stables, but they're not exactly the best horses. I don't care if it's a cow. I want to go riding with you, all right? All right. All set? In a moment. There's one thing I'm right about anyway. What's that? You're the prettiest woman in the valley. You haven't seen the others. Shane has. She's the prettiest woman in the valley. Poem again, Joey. From this valley they say you are leaving. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. But remember the Red River Valley and the cowboy that loved you so true. It's some poem. How about a nightcap? No, no, I don't think I will. A little honest conversation might be helpful to both of us, Shane. <laughs> Good 
Okay, get us another bottle, Ben. <clears throat> Give us two, Ben. That's the one that Grafton told me about, Mr. Riker. A toast. To honesty. A man doesn't travel all the way to Wyoming just to renew a casual friendship, Shane. It has to be something more than that. Are you just the hired hand? I have no claim on Mrs. Sterrett, if that's what you mean. Is that the way you want it to be? I've had one drink, and you've had one answer. I think we've both had enough. Oh. Don't let Ned overcharge you on the horses. The going rate is 50 cents a day. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> a big pardon, mister. Did I understand that you're visiting the Widow Starrett? Why, yes. Why? She's a fine woman. Wonderful lady. My name's Ruth Riker. How do you do? I own a little ranch here about. And now, if there's anything I can do to make your stay more pleasurable, like loan your horse or something like that. Why, thank you. I was going to rent one. Oh, I wouldn't think of that. I'll have one of my men bring a horse over first thing in the morning. Well, I'll take you up on that, Mr. Riker. My name's Warren Elliott. Pleasure is all mine, Mr. Elliott. Well, thank you again. Good night. Good night. What are you going to do? Put a burr under his saddle? Give him the stallion. Neither one. Going to give him that gentle old mare and a riding lesson. Is he fooling? Why? Maybe that dude doesn't want to marry Mrs. Starrett half as much as Mr. Riker wants him to. Well, you boys know me. I've always been soft-hearted about romance. I think that Mr. Elliot and Miss Starrett ought to have a real fancy wedding. Back east somewhere. Warren. It's easy. All you have to do is imagine there's a fox just over the next hill. Come on. I suppose it is dull if you're just sitting in the gallery, listening to a bunch of long-winded men spouting high-blown phrases. But you don't find it dull. No, I don't. Of course, it's not as spectacular as climbing mountains or building a bridge. But when I help to pass a bill, it, it, it changes things. It moves things forward, and that's not dull. Marion, I didn't come all this way to talk about politics. I've come more than miles on this trip, Marion. I'm trying to reach across some years, too. You're going to turn my head? I'm not used to so many pretty compliments. Why not? What's wrong with the men in the West? They give them to silences. Long ones like the winters. Isn't it about time you, you tried an easier climate? Stop fighting, Marion. Surrender with honor. Like General Lee, pretend this is Appomattox. Oh, you're such a fool, Warren. You're never serious. If I ever let myself show how really serious I am, you'd ride away in terror. I want to take you and Joey back east with me, if you'll let me. It's a beautiful compliment. That's such a big move. We'd better be getting back. 
It's a simple thing to say. If what you really want to say is no. It would be if I were certain. But I'm not. I'm going to escort you home and leave you there high and dry till tomorrow. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll miss me. Enough to say yes in the morning. I can't decide overnight. I can't change Joey's life. Not until I know my own mind. Surely you can see that. No. But I'm in love. Maybe there's a fox over the next hill. Come on. Tom Sturt. Looks like there's gonna be a big move back east. Is that what it looks like to you, Riker? I was just thinking, uh, could ease your path if you could sell for a fair price. I'm not going anywhere, Riker. I could just wait for you to quit. Make it cheaper for me. Well, we got wood to haul. What for? Your house will be empty this winter. I saw Miss Starrett this morning. She was out riding with a friend. Appeared to be having a mighty fine time. Well, Shane, I never thought I'd get you out of the valley this way. He's just bluffing. He knows all the money in the world wouldn't get us out of this valley. He's not counting on money. He's counting on a... Boston Senator. We gonna see the Senator tonight? No, he thinks I need some time by myself. To think about him, of course. But you know what? What? I'm thinking about me, like a selfish little girl of 18. Sort of got you in a whirl, hasn't he? Does it show? Yeah, it shows. He wants me, Father Starrett. You don't know what it means just to have someone want to be with you. Depends a little on what you want, doesn't it? Oh, I suppose. But I can always be serious later. Well, not too much later, Marion, or you might come down to earth with a thump. You know, you're not 18, honey, any more than I'm 40. What would you do if I did decide to marry Warren? Would you come with Joey and me? No, I don't think I would, honey. You get to be my age, you want something that's really yours. I put a lot of work into this land. Sort of bought it from nature, you might say. If I was to come with you, well... I'd be living in his house, eating his food, and rattling around some spare bedroom in the back, maybe with a separate stairway. But if you'd stay here, you'd be all alone. Oh, I got good neighbors. I've been a bachelor before. Maybe you'd even marry again yourself if I was to go. <laughs> well, that's an idea. Just what I'll do. Tom, you're a liar. I know, it's awful devil's habit. I've been meaning to swear off. But whatever I am, honey, isn't any of your worry. Just remember that. Thump. Shane, what are people back east like? Well, they're just people, Joey. About like us. Just like us? Well, they didn't say just like. They said about. In some ways, they're different. How are they different, Shane? Oh, their houses are different for one thing. They've been there longer, got deeper foundations. And all the streets have names. 
It's not so easy for a man to get lost. Or a boy. Why do you ask? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Hey. Want me to sharpen your hatchet for you? No, thank you. I think I'll go to bed. Good night. Are you feeling all right, Joey? I'm going to bed so early. Sure. Good night, Shane. Good night, Joey. Leave him be. Whatever you say will only make matters worse. But why was he acting like that? Did, did Tom tell him anything? Didn't know there was anything to tell. Shane, what do you think of Warren Elliott? I like him. Why? Oh, maybe because he's a lot of things I'm not. Settled, secure, safe. Some people need that. But you don't. If you've never had something, it's hard to tell whether you need it or not. Shame. When I lost my husband, I promised myself I wouldn't be afraid. That I'd stay here and finish what he started. That sounds pretty fine, doesn't it? Sounds like you. No. It sounds like the woman I'd like to be. It doesn't sound like a woman who's afraid and, and tired. It's not so bad at the end of the day when you say to yourself, how did I do it? What's bad is when you say, why? Mom? Joey. You said you were going to bed. I can't find my turtle. You left it in my room. Oh. He can stay with you tonight, Shane. Thank you very much, Joey. Go on. Get inside. Scat. I'll be in to tuck you in in a minute. Is Mr. Elliot going to be here tomorrow, Mom? No. I'm going to meet him in town. We're going to have dinner at Grafton's. Now, go on. Good night, Shane. Good night, Joey. If you're going in town tomorrow night, I ought to drive you. I can drive myself. I know that. But you've got a hired man. And that's his job. The bed bugs bite. That's right. Mom. What is it? I sure do like it here. Good night, Joey. Good night, Mom.
Yes, you do it. Very good. Do you know how to make a toddy? Yes, sir. Hot water, sugar, and uh, whiskey. Fine. Now, if the lady wants a drink, that's what you'll bring her. Yes, sir. I'll be back with Sam. You call me when you're ready to leave. Shane? Bring a bottle, Sam. Hello. Hello, Warren. Thank you for coming. Would you like a toddy, Miss Darrett? Oh, no, thank you, Ben. Not right now. You might be able to get through this evening without a drink, but I don't think I can. Ben? You better make it two. You look lovely. Sounds like they're hitting it off real good. Hitting what off? You know. It. Yeah. It. Thank you, Ben. When was the last time you were served dinner, Marion? So long ago, I can hardly remember. And I don't even have to wash the dishes. Do you remember those picnics our families used to go on? Of course. There were cliffs along that shore. And I remember wanting to climb them. And you used to say to me, no, Warren, don't. You mustn't. It's too dangerous. I'd ask you why. And you'd say, because it was a very long fall. Well, I'm climbing a cliff now, Marion. It's still a very long fall. But what's the top of the cliff may be worth the risk. There's a stage going east tomorrow. I'm going to be on it. I want you to come with me. Sorry, well, we didn't mean to interrupt nothing. Not at all, Mr. Riker. Won't you join us? No, no thanks. Uh, we just run out at the house. Whiskey, I mean. Thought we'd come and pick up a bottle, be on our way. Ben! <laughs> ben! <laughs> oh, Ben! <laughs> ben, can we have a bottle out here, please? Now, Shane. She deserves one evening without problems, without Riker. It would have been awful if Riker had joined us. Well, he didn't, so there we are. I'm just getting a bottle, Shane. What's he doing here? He drove me in. I see. Hey, Shane. You want me out of there? Is that what that little twitch of your head meant? Riker, you are intruding. Not half as much as you. It's a nice romantic dinner party going on in there. It's hardly your place. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Riker. He's got a cubby hole out at that farm, and he's got one here. So near, yet so far. Huh, Shane? Harv, for the past few days, 
I have felt building in me the need to punch somebody in the mouth. I still feel that need, Harve. Don't get riled, Shane. You gotta lose sometimes. Sorry, Miss Starrett. I know you sort of planned a special evening, and uh, my boy sure spoiled it for you. Do you really want me to leave so badly, Mr. Riker? I think I'd like to go, Warren. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks for the help. My pleasure. You know how long you're going to be staying with us, Mr. Elliott? No, I don't, Ben. That decision's entirely up to a lovely lady named Marion. person who apologize wants me to leave the valley. Besides, I don't like to leave a job halfway done. Shane, what's gotten into you? Into me? Yes. It has gotten into me. Well, do you usually chop wood at this hour of the night? No, I don't. Well, then. But if you're going back east, then I want to make sure that every job on this place is finished before I move on. I've got to get this wood in before it rains. I didn't say I was going with Warren. Well, you're a fool if you don't. He's a good man and he's got a future. You said yourself what it's like for you out here. It's a rotten life. Do you want me to go? We're not talking about what I want.
you would for the winter. Marion? It's Joey, honey. He's calling for you. He's still afraid of thunderstorms. Go on. He needs you. It's good to be needed. Joey, I'm here. I'll stay as long as you need me. Will you, Mom? Sure. Now you sleep tight. It's all right, Mike. We aren't going anywhere. 